In 1970, I hitchhiked from London, through Europe, and through the Middle East. And finally, after six months, I reached India, which was my goal. When I finally arrived at the border, I was covered with dust. I was very, very sickly, but I felt such great anticipation. I finally arrived. Then the immigration agent asked how much money I had. I had 26 cents. She rejected me. She said, we, had an, we have enough beggars in India. We do not want another one. Then the guard changed, and I pleaded with him and cried. I promised him, please give me a chance. I promise you. Someday, I will try to do something good for your people. And I've been trying. My experience with Radhana Swami is that he is a builder of communities. It makes perfect sense when we actually read the book because right from uh, 1985 when he came here, he uh, exemplified the same kind of uh, characteristics. We started an ashram here, and some of the people we were connected to at that time were medical students, some were business people, and we were all thinking that why not start our own hospital? The core value, if you ask me, is Spirituality is as important to the wholesome well-being of a person as it is mental hygiene, as the physical health, as the social security. In those days, we started Department of Spiritual Care, which was a very innovative new venture. Basically, we aimed at giving them kindness and compassion. So what we've tried to do is inspire the spirit, the spirit of what is in Sanskrit is called seva. Seva means to serve God in a way of being an instrument of God's compassion to humanity without selfish motives. We are adopting the approach uh, of more like a fortune at the bottom of the pyramid. So one paying patient is able to take care of uh, one non-paying patient. It's more like a kind of cross-subsidy that we are following. Besides 130 beds where we're treating people here, we have regular camps where we do cataract eye surgeries for people who are going blind. It's perhaps the greatest reason for blindness in India is untreated cataracts. We come entirely on a voluntary basis. Uh, none of the doctors are paid for their services here. I felt connected because I had cataracts when I was 27 and I know what it's like not to be able to see and then it's really a miracle when you get your cataracts removed that you can see leaves on the tree again where before it was just a blur. They really feel a lot of love and concern for each patient and service each of these patients like a human being whom they know and who they really care for. When doctors, nurses, and everyone else learn this spirit, not of treating for profit, but for treating with love, they connect to a fulfillment that is beyond anything that money or property or fame could possibly compare to. Government of India in the year 1995 came up with a unique idea of providing meals in the schools so that the children will be attracted by the meals. They will come to school and get educated. Unfortunately, the government does not have enough resources to effectively give a good, nutritious meal to every child every day. When they're hungry in school, 
They can't concentrate on their studies. And rather than sitting there wasting their time, they'd rather quit school to go out and beg. With a humble beginning of feeding 900 students on the first day, over the period of six years, uh, Iskon Food Relief Foundation now has 19 centers in different parts of India. And each day, each school working day, 850,000 meals are cooked and served to these schools. Before the food had started, there was at least 20, 25 children used to come for studying, you know. And now, as soon as that food was started down, now we have more than 200 children eating and studying here. When we say that it costs us 4 rupees and 50 paise per day per child, we are talking about all the overheads included. And as schools run for 200 days in a year, it costs something like $20 to feed one child for one complete year. Now this is something which is very doable. Radhana Swami is a builder of communities. The community around the temple, the community around the hospital, the contributions that he's doing to the midday meal. His inspiration is what drives us to be involved more and more in this project. In my 60 years in this world, I found that there is nothing so precious as the opportunity to serve and to serve as an expression of our love for God and our love for God within the hearts of others is the greatest wealth, the greatest happiness.